fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Lonely campfires throughout the western United States, cowboys still tell of the daring deeds of the mysterious phantom figure of the plains. With his great horse Silver and his faithful Indian companion Tonto, he fought crime and injustice relentlessly. The famous masked rider did more than any other single individual to bring law and order to the early frontier. And now, as the hoofs of Silver thunder down the trail, adventure comes to life once more. The Lone Ranger rides again. The sheriff of the county, Greg Morgan, was known as a stern manhunter, a terror to outlaws in his district. We see two of his prisoners, Dan Cooley and Wolf Brandt, sharing a cell together. The light of a fl- flickering lamp reveals the cunning and cruelty of Wolf's features. He speaks softly to Dan. We shouldn't have much longer to wait, Dan. Can you hear the deputy stern? Ain't heard a thing. Red had better get here before the deputy comes to take our lamp, or we'll have to wait another day before breaking out. There's only one thing I want to get away for, and that's to shoot it out with Sheriff Morgan. I didn't kill old man Bailey, and he knows it. Last time I seen Red, he said the sheriff weren't any too sure you killed Bailey. But he was going to hang you for it anyway. Some sneaking Norman Coyote had done the job, and I could blame for it. I never had no use for Bailey, but I never planned to do him harm. Well, you can't hardly blame the sheriff for arresting you the way things look. The only thing I got to back my story is a letter I picked up before they took me away. Yeah. What'd you do with that letter? I got it hid away. I won't bring it out until court sets. There ain't nothing in the letter that matters, but there's a name on it. Clem Rabb. Ever hear of him? Uh, no. Well, I'm betting the letter was dropped there by the real killer without his knowing it. I wouldn't pin no hope on that. Uh Uh-huh. That's another thing I got again the sheriff. He as much as said that letter didn't have no bearing on the case. You got a lot to explain, Dan. The sheriff found you laying just a few yards away from Bailey with a bullet crease in your scalp. Bailey was dead. Shot by two bullets from the gun you was holding. But it weren't my gun. I ain't saying it was. But something like that's hard to explain. Yeah. And everybody knows there was bad blood between Bailey and me. If I don't break jail, Wolf, I won't have a chance for my life. The sheriff claims you both shot about the same time. But you hit Bailey first and his shot went wild. Just creasing the top of your scalp. Then why don't he call it self-defense instead of murder? Well, Bailey was an old man. There ain't nobody around this part of the country that can draw as fast as you can. Blasted, I never drawed on him, I tell you. I just happened to be down there hunting some strays. I never even seen Bailey. If Red gets us free, 
Will you still go gunning for the sheriff? It'll be a fair fight, but I'll get him. I want him out of the way just as bad as you do, Dan. He's the only witness there is against me on that rustling charge. With him dead, there won't be no case. That's the first thing I'll do when we break jail. Then when that's done, I'm going to take that letter and trace down the fellow that done the shooting. If it takes me the rest of my life. Hold on, Dan. I thought I heard something just then. Yeah? Outside by the window. Maybe it's red. He ought to be here by now. We'll soon see. Oh, Hey, Wolf. Red. By golly, you didn't get here none too soon. Come over by the window. I brought the guns. I'll hand them through the bars. Good. Here you are. You got a hold of them. Yeah. Here you are, Dan. Take one and put it in your shirt. Thanks. How about horses, Red? I got three good horses hitched in front of the cafe right across from the jail. When you come out, you'll see me standing beside her. Everything's set, then. You'd better be clearing out. The deputy will be coming along for our lamp pretty soon, and he... All right, fellas. It's after nine o'clock. I gotta take your lamp. Hurry, Red. That's the deputy coming now. Time you fellas was hitting the hay, anyhow. All right, deputy. Just stand a little closer so as I can hand the lamp through. I should have come after it before, but then I... What the... Stand where you are, deputy. We both got you covered. I don't want to shoot, Judd. I ain't got nothing against nobody but the sheriff. But if you make a sound, I'll have to shoot. You're breaking jail. You just bet we are. You can't get away with it. Shut you... up and unlock this door. You got your keys right there. Well, by God, I... Judd, make it fast. Maybe somebody heard that lamp busting. Uh, I'm, I'm unlocking it. Just wait till I find the right key. You find it quicker. I, I, I got it now. Open the door and don't make no sudden moves. Take it easy, Wolf. Me and Judd have always been good friends. That don't matter none now. Now walk ahead of us, deputy. Is there anyone in the front office? Sheriff's there. And he'll see you fellas, sure as blazes. And it'll be the worst for him. I got a notion to have it out with him right now. Don't be a darn fool, Dan. We gotta get away from here without too much commotion. Yeah, I reckon, but... Don't talk. We're almost to the office and the door's open. Keep right on going, deputy. And if you says one word, it'll be your last one. Blast you, Wolf. It's you that put Dan up to this. That's you out there, Judd. Sheriff, it's a jailbreak. Wolf and... Oh! You shot him in the back, Wolf. You shouldn't have done that. A dirty coyote tried to double cross us. Run for it, Dan. Get to the horses. Hey, hold on. The whole town will be down on us pronto. There's a the fellow over by them horses. That's red, all right. Come on. Stop him. They're not the jail. Stop him. Hurry up, you fellas. We got here as fast as we could. That blame fool deputy went loco, and I had to let him have it. Man, stop them elbows. Get on the horses. Hey, Hurry it up, can't you, Wolf? I'm ready now. The reins were caught on the hitch rack. Oh, they're almost on. Get up there. Get up, get up. Get up. Get up. Get your horses. On, We're going to bust it. Well, show them outlaws that nobody can bust out of Greg Morgan's jail and get away with it. A posse pursued the three men into the hills, but the fugitives made good their escape. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, made camp near Winford. The next morning, they saddled their horses and rode toward town. As they neared Winford, the masked man pulled Silver to a stop. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Come, Tonto. We'll ask that man sitting on the porch of that house there if he'll sell us any provisions. Mm, him. Him get him hurt. Yes, his shoulder is bandaged. Howdy. What are you fellas? Hey, you masked. What the... We'll not harm you. We stopped here only to see if you'd sell us some food. Maybe I didn't hear you just right. Did you say you wanted to buy some grub? Mm, that's right. And me here with a bullet through my shoulder, so I couldn't he help you help yourself? We're willing to pay. We're not outlaws. Well, buy Juniper for your hearts. First time I ever heard of outlaws buying anything they didn't have to. We don't need much. Just whatever you can spare. Oh, I'll let you have some grub, all right. I can see for myself you ain't fellows ain't crooks. I was sheriff of these year parts for too many years to be fooled of. On a thing like that. Thank you. You're the sheriff, you say? Never said nothing like. All I said was I used to be sheriff. When my rheumatic got bad, they, they made Greg Morgan sheriff, and he hired me for a deputy. And did an outlaw give you that wound? Say, ain't you heard what happened in town? We're just heading there. You're the first man we've seen to speak to for several days. Well, then you sure missed a heap of excitement. Yes? Wolf Brandt and Dan Cooley busted out of jail. That's when I got this shoulder shot up. I've heard of Wolf Brent. Oh, he's plenty tough and he's plenty slick. Slick enough to get away without the sheriff catching him anyhow. 
The posse just got back this morning without him. But who is Dan Cooley? Oh, he's just ranching a small way around these parts till the sheriff jailed him for killing old man Bailey. Dan Cooley killed Bailey? Hold on now. I didn't say Dan killed him. I only said the sheriff arrested him. Don't you believe Dan to be guilty? Well, tell the truth, stranger, I don't. Oh, by golly, things sure look bad for him. But the sheriff must have had a reason for arresting him. No, he had plenty of evidence. But when evidence points to something I know can't be so, then I throws the evidence out. Why? Dan ain't a killer, that's why. Maybe he'd fight it out man to man, but he'd never go after a feller as old as Bailey was. I see. But I sure hate to see him running around loose around the country now. Yes? There's going to be trouble, sure as I got a lame arm. Dan figures the sheriff didn't have give him a square deal. And he's told everybody he'd get the sheriff for it first chance he had. Do you believe Dan meant that? You bet I do. He won't dry gulch the sheriff. And he ain't no sneaking killer. But he'll go for him the first chance he gets. Dan must have a lot of confidence in himself. No reason why he shouldn't. There ain't a man in or around Winford that he can't beat on the draw. And that's including the sheriff, too. But has the sheriff really been unfair to Dan? Well, the sheriff sets a lot of store on evidence without figuring anything else, like I do. And he sure likes to convict outlaws. Sometimes men of that type make bad mistakes. I've seen it happen before. If Dan wants revenge, he won't leave this district until he and the sheriff have met. <laughs> You're darn right he won't. Come, Tonto, we're leaving. Hey, wait for your grub. What's your hurry, anyhow? We may see you again. Come around any time. What... What we do, huh? I believe the deputy is a good judge of character, Tyler. Uh-huh. A good enough judge to realize that we weren't outlaws in spite of the mask I'm wearing. Perhaps he's right about Dan Cooley. On to think that. Steady, Silver. Yep. <clears throat> the deputy is right. We must save Dan before he kills the sheriff and actually becomes an outlaw. Mm. That, that right. Dan will attempt to get the sheriff. But you and I, Kimosabe, are going to take turns secretly guarding the sheriff. We'll guard him day and night. Uh-huh. Then when Dan confronts the sheriff, one of us will be there. Come on, Silver. Get him up, White Collar. The sheriff did not know that his movements were being closely watched for the next two days. We see him now on the second evening at home, just finishing supper. His wife is speaking. Well, I'll clear away the dishes, Greg. You'd better be getting to bed. You always get up so early in the morning. Mm, I reckon I will, Mary. Have you have you heard anything more about Dan Cooley? I'm so worried I can't hardly sleep nights for thinking of what may happen if you two meet up. Now, don't you worry, none, Mary. I... <coughs> Someone fired at you. Well, he didn't hit me by a thunder, and I'm going outside to find the skunk. Greg, don't. You'll be killed. Oh, Greg, come back here. I can take care of myself. Greg, no go Bless you. Save the share of that time, but you want the next. Steady, steady, Silver. I'll meet up with you yet, Greg Morgan. So you shot at me through the window, did you, Dan? Hey, you, fella, hold on to him. Get along there, get up. Don't let him get away, stop him. No, put up your gun. I'll shoot him. No, you don't. Oh, Dan, better let go of my arm, you made me miss. That's just what I wanted to do. A mask, man. Come on. Dan didn't shoot at you through the window. That bullet was fired at me and went wild. But I, I didn't want him to kill you. Now look here. And I didn't want him captured in case you shot him. What right have you got to interfere? You'll have to trust me, Sheriff. You had caught Dan, Wolf, and the other man who helped them break out of jail would still be free. But now I ain't got none of them. Take my word for it, Sheriff. You'll get them all. Hmm? What do you mean? I let Dan Cooley go so he could lead me to their hideout. Is that what you had in mind? And now it's time to follow him. I'll see you. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Wolf Brandt, an outlaw, and Dan Cooley, arrested on circumstantial evidence for a murder, escaped from jail with the aid of Red Brill. When Dan would have forced a gunfight on the sheriff, the Lone Ranger prevented it, permitting Dan to escape, however. As our second act opens, we see Dan reining in his horse at the hidden camp he shares with Wolf and Red. Oh, oh there my horse. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. Hey, Dan, did you get him? Did you shoot him all right? No, I didn't. Huh? There was a masked man outside the house. He mixed in and I had to run for it. Masked man? I tried to shoot him, but he was coming at me so fast on that big white horse of his that I got rattled and missed. So now you gotta get the sheriff some other time. I ain't give up yet. If you wasn't such a darn fool, Dan, you'd dry gulch him instead of giving him a chance to outdraw you. I'll do this in my own way, and that's that. Well, just so you don't miss out the next time, you better pick at your horse back in the arroyo with the others. Yeah. I'll take care of him right now. Come on, boy. Oh, rat the fool. I was hoping he'd finish the sheriff tonight. I don't like this waiting. I want to get that letter Dan's hiding and clear out. Yeah, but we can't make him give it to us till he shot the sheriff. <laughs> but when that's done, Dan's going to get a surprise he ain't looking for. And he won't like it none either. Ain't no danger in hearing us, is there? No, he's over with the horses. I sure wish I'd never dropped that letter when I finished off Bailey. Wishing ain't going to do you any good. You lost it, and now you got to get it back. Uh, no one knows me around here by the name on that letter, though. Uh-huh. But you never know when somebody will find out your real name is Clem Rand. Yeah. There's only one way we can work this. First, we got to see that Dan takes care of the sheriff. He'll do that all right. Then when the sheriff's killed so he can't be a witness again you on that cattle stealing charge, we'll make Dan tell where the letter is. He won't hold out on us for long. No. And as soon as we get that letter, we'll finish Dan off. It won't be safe leaving him alive once he finds out it was you that killed Bailey and framed him. <laughs> that worked out pretty good. I meant to kill Dan when I seen him riding toward where Bailey was laying. But when I found I just knocked him out, I put my gun in his hand and left him there. That was a slick idea. Keep your voice down. Dan's coming back. Uh-huh. Well, the horses are better down. I'm about ready to turn in. Hold on a second. What's on your mind, Wolf? We want to know when you plan to try for the sheriff again. We can't be fooling around too long. Well, I've been giving that some thought. Yeah? I ain't going back to the house and take the risk of running into that masked fella again. Well, what are you going to do? I reckon you fellas know the sheriff gets up before daylight in the morning. Uh-huh. We know that. He gets up so as he can relieve the deputy that's on duty, guarding the jail all night. Well, get on with it. The sheriff's got about a mile to go between his house and town. There's more than that. Well, I'll wait for him somewhere along that stretch. And this time, there won't be no one around to keep us from shooting it out. I still say you're a fool for giving him a chance. What if he outdraws you? He won't. I can draw twice as fast as the sheriff ever could. Yeah, I ain't gonna argue about it. Good night. You ain't got no sense at all. Maybe I won't be seeing you fellas in the morning. I'll be getting up pretty early to meet the sheriff. I never met up with a fellow as stubborn as him before. Let him do it his own way, Wolf. If he's loco enough to give the sheriff a chance, let him. Well, I wouldn't. You know the sheriff can't draw near as fast as Dan, so it won't make no difference in the end. That's so, I reckon. And if nothing else goes wrong, the sheriff will be out our way after tomorrow morning. Then it'll be our turn, and we'll do things our way, not his. <laughs> We've heard enough, Silver Old Fellow. Now to get Tonto, then call on the sheriff once more. The Lone Ranger carefully led Silver through the woods that surrounded the outlaw's camp. Safely away, he hurriedly mounted, raced to his own camp and repeated what he had heard to Tonto. Then, together, they rode to the sheriff's home. We hear the masked man as he knocks on the sheriff's door. Who's there? A friend. I want to speak to you. Hold on a second. Hurry, Sheriff. You think him do what you say? I believe he will. He knows I followed Dan Cooley to the outlaw's camp. That should convince him I'm on his side. Oh. Say, ain't you the masked fellow was here before? Yes. And I have something important to tell you. Who is the redskin with you? Seems to me I've seen him someplace. Tonto's my friend, and you may have seen him while he was guarding you. Guarding me? We wanted to prevent Dan killing you. Well, I'll be doggone. I followed Dan to his camp. You did? You just wait till I get my horse. One moment, Sheriff. 
I learned enough to know that Dan is not guilty of the crime for which you jailed him. Now, look here. The man who killed Bailey is Wolf Bratz. I can't believe it. Dan is innocent. That's why he feels you were unfair to him. Unfair to him? Say, I had enough evidence to hang a dozen men. But that evidence was planted, and Wolf is urging Dan to kill you because he doesn't want you to be able to testify against him for rustling. Well, why can't we arrest a whole bunch of them right now? Because if we did, we couldn't prove Dan's innocence. You'll have a hard time convincing me that Dan ain't guilty. I know, but I have a plan that will prove it and capture the outlaws as well. You have? Dan expects to meet you on the way to town in the morning and force you to fight. Mm, That don't surprise me none. But we can turn that into the means of learning the truth about this affair. Hmm, that sounds right interesting. Will you do as I suggest? Talk right up. If your plan makes sense, I'll give it a try. Good. First, Sheriff, Toto and I will have time to get back to the outlaws' camp before Dan gets up. You leave here in the morning just as though nothing were wrong. And then... The Sheriff agreed to the masked man's plan. Then, while it was still dark... The Lone Ranger and Tonto made their way to the outlaw's camp. The sleeping men were unaware of Tonto's quiet movements inside the camp. Nor did they hear him rejoin the masked man a short distance away. Is that you, Tonto? Tonto, do what you tell him. Good work. You sure no one saw you? Then not see me. Then our plan is ready. Now there's nothing we can do but hide here and wait. Laws awakened before dawn. Dan Cooley, under the watchful eyes of his companions, strapped on his gun belt, saddled his horse, and made ready for his meeting with the sheriff. In the meantime, the sheriff arose at his usual time and started for town. We see him riding slowly down the road. I'm sure hoping the mask fellow had everything figured out right. It looked to me like a fellow that savvy what he was doing. So did the engine, for that matter. Get along, there, boy. Come on, get along. You ought to be seeing something of Dan most any time now. Town ain't so far away. Hold on there, Sheriff. Dan Cooley. Stop your horse. You got the drop on me. Oh, there, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Knock it down. We got something to be settled between us, and it's going to be settled right now. Are you clean, loco? You can't... You might just as well keep still, Sheriff. Talk won't do you no good now. What do you want with me? Stand away from that horse. But I... Hurry. All right. All right, I'm doing what you tell me to. Now I'm putting my gun back in the holster. There. Dan, what are you aiming to do? I reckon you know what I'm going to do, Sheriff. There ain't nobody around here that ain't heard me say I was going to shoot you down as soon as I got the chance. Yeah, but I... But I ain't the man to kill a fellow without letting him go for his gun. You ain't going to get away with this, Dan. Who's to stop me? That masked fella ain't hanging around now to protect you. I don't need nobody's help. I'm glad you feel that way. Now my gun's in the holster. You and me will draw at the same time. And if I don't draw? Then if you get killed, it's your own fault. Uh Uh-huh. Get ready. I'm counting to three. And then if you ain't made a move for your iron, I'm shooting regardless. You don't need to count. I'm going to... their camp, Wolf and Red waited anxiously for Dan's return. His success meant the accomplishment of their plans. His failure threatened them with further danger. We hear them as they discuss the situation. I'd sure like to know how Dan come out, Red. This waiting's making me fidgety. That ain't doing you no good. But it's been near three hours since he rode away. He should have been back by now. Just hold on to yourself. There won't be nothing to, we can do till he gets here. That must be him now. It is him. Hi there, Dan. Hurry along. Oh, 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 there. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I... I done it. You did? That fixes everything up just right. Did you have much trouble? No, but I... I ain't feeling so good about it now. Maybe I had things figured out wrong after all. Uh-huh. You had things figured wrong, all right. But not the things you're thinking of. Huh? Face your hands. Hey... What's going on here? You heard him. Get your hands up. But wait, look here, I... There's something we want to know. And you'd better tell us pronto if you savvy what's good for you. But I... What do you do with that letter you found near Bailey? Yeah. You want that letter? You're darn right we do. But what's it got to do with you fellas? Just this. 
It was me that dropped that letter. What's that? So if you think we're fooling, you can get that notion out of your head right now. Then, then you're the hombre that shot Bailey. And what if I was? And, and that means it was you that framed me for the killing. It was you that shot me and put that gun in my hands. <laughs> sure I did. And it turned out just right. Why, you dirty polecats. We ain't got no time to waste on you. We want to know where you hid that letter. I ain't saying. Oh, well, by golly, you will. Or you won't live to ride away from this camp. And that ain't no bluff either. Do what you please, but you ain't getting that letter. Now, don't be a fool, Dan. If you were dead, that letter ain't going to do you no good. Maybe not. But as long as you ain't got it, there's a chance that the law will catch up with you. Are you going to give it to us? No. Why are you... Well, Dan, you've asked for it. And now you're going to get it. Oh, my hand. Where'd that shot come from? I fired it. Up with your hands, all of you. And there's a sheriff. But it can't be him. I... I just shot him. Blast it! I saw him fall. Well, I... all right, Dan. That was just part of the masked man's trick. Huh? What did you say? The Redskin came into your camp last night. But what? You I... was sleeping, so you didn't hear him. But he took the bullets out of your gun and stuck in blanks. I, I shot you with blanks. That's right. Tonto and I watched you when you made ready to leave this morning, Dan. If you had discovered the trick, we would have prevented your firing at the sheriff. Wait a second. According to that sheriff, you could have fired at me if you'd wanted to. Uh huh. But you didn't. You let me go. You've had me sized up wrong, Dan. All I do is my duty. But I don't go out of my way to harm nobody. Well, you've got us again. I, I reckon you'll be taking us back to jail. You won't have to stay there for long, Dan. Why, I thought I... As soon as you rode off, I got my horse and followed you. And I heard enough to know that Wolf there is the dirty skunk that killed Bailey. It ain't so. I never... Shut up. You can't lie your way out of this, Wolf. But I never kill anybody, Sheriff. You ain't got nothing on me. There's plenty on you. You helped Wolf to break jail. And just now you would have killed Dan if we hadn't been close by. Sheriff, I feel bad about this. I was going to shoot you, and now you've proved I'm innocent. Forget about it, Dan. Besides, it weren't me that caught these fellas. It wasn't. Nope. The credit belongs to the mask man, the engine. If it hadn't been for them, I'd still be looking to jail you for murder, and these skunks would have gone free. Oh, Silver! Come on, Silver, old fellow! Tonto's waiting on the trail! There's danger ahead! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>